Things continue to be very tense in northern Nigeria. Over the past few days, we have seen reports of bombing attacks, ambushes of government forces, and arrests, all related to the militant group Boko Haram. These recent developments provide us a great opportunity to discuss Boko Haram and to evaluate the threat they pose to Nigeria and beyond. On February 13th, the State Director for Finance in Nigeria's Kaduna State reportedly drove a car into a government compound in the city of Kaduna. After the vehicle came to a halt, he then reportedly attempted to flee and was shot. Nigerian authorities claim the vehicle he drove was filled with explosives. This purported attack is different from other recent attacks in Nigeria's north in that the vehicle was driven by a high-level government official and it failed to detonate. We're still trying to determine if it was an attempted suicide bombing or just a regular vehicle bombing attempt. Now, the day before that alleged bombing attempt, Nigerian authorities arrested one of the alleged masterminds of Boko Haram's other bombing attacks. The leader, who is known as Kabira Sokoto, had been arrested in January, but was set free after Boko Haram militants ambushed the vehicles transporting him from the Borno state in the north to the Nigerian capital, Abuja, in the center of the country. We have been carefully watching Boko Haram because since late 2010, the group has rapidly progressed from using small explosive devices and Molotov cocktails in its attack to successfully employing suicide vehicle-borne improvised devices, VBIDs. This was a very sudden leap and is something that normally happens more gradually as a group learns the tradecraft skills required to successfully execute such attacks. These attacks are really far more difficult to conduct than they may look and it takes a long time to learn the skills required to do them. We had seen reports that Boko Haram had received training from either Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, the Al-Qaeda franchise in North Africa, or Al-Shabaab, the Al-Qaeda franchise in Somalia. Boko Haram's rapid progress seemed to support such claims and that they probably received training from one of these groups. However, it is important to recognize that while Boko Haram is clearly advanced in its operational tradecraft as far as attacks are concerned in its support base in northern Nigeria, but aside from two suicide bombings in the Nigerian capital of Abuja, which is located in central Nigeria, the group has not yet shown that it has the capability to project uh, attacks and its power beyond its support base. They likewise have not shown the ability to successfully conduct attacks against well-defended targets. More significantly, Boko Haram has also not demonstrated the real intent to conduct attacks outside of its area of operations, much less transnationally. This means that at the present time, the group is unlikely to follow in the footsteps of groups such as Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, the Yemen-based Al-Qaeda franchise, which has attempted to conduct uh, transnational attacks against the United States and Saudi Arabia. At the current time, it appears that Boko Haram may be following a trajectory similar to other jihadist groups we have seen in the past, which have garnered a lot of attention as they literally exploded onto the scene, uh, but then kind of fizzled out as they were weakened by the attacks of security forces who ramped up their operations against the group in response to their initial attacks. Uh, we saw this dynamic displayed in places like Morocco, the Sinai Peninsula, and elsewhere. We really even saw this occur with Saudi Al-Qaeda, and to some extent the GSPC, after they became Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. Now certainly there's still an undercurrent of militancy in these places, in the Maghreb, for example, more than elsewhere, but the security forces have whittled the threat down to a far lower level than it was when it first emerged. These responsive security crackdowns also frequently lead to an ideological splintering within the group involved over things like target selection and the decision to ramp up attacks in the first place. This division further serves to weaken the group and it makes it hard for them to recruit and acquire resources. As we analyze the Boko Haram activity over the past few months, it quickly becomes evident to us that before the group can become an existential threat to the Nigerian government, or a legitimate transnational threat. It will need to develop the ability to deploy its IEDs and suicide operatives in a way that allows it to successfully attack hardened targets. It will also need to develop the ability to work beyond its traditional areas of operation. Until it can master these skills, and indeed until it shows an intent to use them, it will remain a regional, albeit deadly, threat. 